Hello, folks. My name is Max, your uh, occasional host of the most. Uh, I've been very, very busy lately, so I, I didn't have uh, a lot of opportunities to uh, make videos lately, but uh, things are getting a bit more quiet. So uh, let's hope uh, I can join you more often than I have uh, lately. Uh, but of course, it's not about me. It's all about Liz Cross. How are you, my dear? Uh, very well, thank you. Of course it's about you, Max. You're like wow. the only one that's brave enough to show their face. <laughs> and, and people, that, that's right. But people do tell me I have a face for radio rather than for uh, YouTube. But uh... <laughs> That's so funny. Well, people often ask why I don't show my face, but it's purely because, and I, you know, they, they even make conspiracy theories about me. Like she must be really ugly or, you know, whatever. Uh, and you've actually seen a picture of me, and I think you would say that I'm not ugly, even though... Liz, you know, Liz is not ugly, folks. Au contraire, I would say. Au contraire. <laughs> but it's simply because of when I worked on these high-profile homicide cases, and I was flown to international crime scenes, and, and I had the Caribbean mafia chasing me and wanting to know, like, who the psychic was on the island, because we need to kill her, right? So... I, it's that simple, folks. There's no big mystery about, you know, why does she hide her face? Maybe she looks like a witch with like one of those little warts on the bottom. And maybe she has a green face and a broom. Who knows what they think? Anyway, Matt. I, I don't know about the warts, but I can say that they're not on your face, at least. So. <laughs> it's so funny. <laughs> so, uh, oh, how we missed you, Max. Well, what do you have for us today? I know you have something unique. Yes, yes, and I'm I'm very cognizant of the fact that uh, we still owe people part two of the ocean, uh, which was a very uh, a very sad uh, video. In fact, we ascertained that uh, the ocean is not in a um, uh, in a very good shape. Of course, we didn't need a psychic uh, to tell us that, but. Uh, we got some very uh, sad details on uh, how the ocean feels uh, in general and toward us specifically, humanity. Uh, and we had many, many more questions uh, about the ocean, about, uh, you know, the mysteries of the ocean from Atlantis to, uh, to, to hidden treasures um, or upcoming disasters related to the ocean. And uh, we haven't forgotten about that. Um, that will be our next vid. I think I should be able to join again uh, next week or uh, I, for sure we can um, we I'm able to do videos more frequently than um, than in the past couple of months uh, where I'd been traveling a lot but today uh, I um, I need to set this topic up uh, for for a couple of minutes so bear with me please um, this video will be about um, the capability of nuclear explosions to actually destroy the soul or the fabric of the soul. People might be thinking now, like, what the hell is this topic all about? And again, bear <laughs> with me here, I'll, uh, I'll explain. So many, many years ago, back in the 1990s, I uh, remember uh, reading a book uh, which was about uh, UFO knowledge um, uh, from... Um, the then uh, former Soviet uh, Union, which uh, at the time had just fallen apart. In my mind, in my memory, the book was written by George Knapp, who undertook, uh, I won't have to explain who he is, uh, I think, uh, who had undertaken a couple of trips uh, in that direction. And um, um, anyway, a couple of um, high placed uh, uh, generals and military uh, defense uh, establishment people were interviewed. And one of these people claimed that aliens had told him uh, that um, that uh, that the power of nuclear explosions were actually uh, able to destroy or at least damage very heavily the fabric 
of the soul. Basically, the soul is a capsule of uh, electromagnetic energy, like an old VHS tape, basically, uh, kind of similar to that, storing our memories and storing our essence. And while the myth is that it's absolutely, absolutely indestructible and will survive everything and anything, maybe it's actually not the case. And uh, I found this very, very scary at the time because I took and still take a lot of comfort out of the fact that uh, whatever will happen here on this world, uh, we will live on. But could it be the case that if we find ourselves in the middle of a nuclear blast, that actually we are deleted uh, forever? Uh, a scary question. So... You know, the, the, uh, it's interesting that um, uh, th there's a story out there that aliens or our managers, uh, the people minding the farm, are not allowing us to use nuclear bombs in a large scale because it, it, it damages their part of the, the galaxy or it tears... Uh, it, it, it damages uh, other dimensions, for example, but maybe part of the story is also that they're protecting us literally from destroying ourselves, not this life or this um, society, but literally our own souls for eternity. I find this a fascinating uh, and also scary question. I'm almost afraid to find out the answer. But this is um, something that it might be a very short video. Maybe the answer is just no, and then that's the end of it. But uh, let's see what Liz uh, has to say. Uh, Liz, how, how would you go about uh, probing the answer? Would you uh, tap into God or uh, maybe uh, you would tap into a nuclear uh, brain probe, a nuclear bomb? Well, nuclear bomb doesn't have a brain, obviously. But um, how would you go about... Uh, it still the has answer. a consciousness, though. Sorry, Max. It's no, still no, I had to stop talking at one point. Sorry about this, folks. Uh, I had to set this up, uh, set this topic uh, properly uh, up. And uh, okay, let's go. Um. So even a nuclear bomb would still have a consciousness. Mm, wow. I, th really? I think that we're going to have yeah, and it just said that its its, it's mission is to destroy. Um, I think we're going to have to go straight to Jesus. Now, there is some speculation that Hitler no longer has a soul, that he was so evil that he has zero soul. His soul has been completely destroyed and disintegrated. That is actually not true. No, Hitler, we spoke to Hitler. Uh, we did five videos on uh, talking to him, no? Yes, we did. And uh, now everybody's going to email me wondering where those videos are. And by the way, folks, I am getting my uh, videos back. I am not starting to move everything onto BitChute, contrary to popular belief, but I do have my old videos and those will be posted on BitChute. Um, and, but and, and, I did and, some really good ones. And, and please re-upload the video where Hitler provides us with investment advice because that was really, really interesting. Yeah, that was bad. Um, but uh, yes, so Hitler's soul is still in existence. So let's go straight to, uh, shall we probe Jesus? Shall we ask Jesus? Sure. Okay. Have you ever spoken to Jesus before? Uh, I think when I was tripping on acid, I did once, but uh, I might have been uh, imagining, imagining that. I, I'm, I'm not sure. That's so funny. Um, well, okay. So what would you like to ask Jesus? Um, well, Jesus, um, I would like to ask you if uh, nuclear bombs have the power or ability to uh, to actually completely wipe out a soul or damage the fabric of the soul oh good question does a nuclear bomb have the ability to wipe out a soul no it does not only god can erase souls 
So not even um, not even slightly uh, damage it, like not at all, like nothing. Basically, nothing can uh, touch or destroy a soul except God Himself, herself, itself. It's trying to be woke here, folks. Yeah. <laughs> Actually, destroy. You're so funny. Actually, destroy a soul other than God. No, only source has the power to completely destroy the soul. And the only way it would, let's ask, would you, let's ask source. Uh, why would you, what would cause you to completely destroy a soul? And that's if the soul is no longer needed for the mission. Okay. Yeah, I know. Um, yeah. Would something then uh, uh, still... Uh, uh, okay, wow, that's that's uh, something interesting here. I, I knew we would go off the rails very quickly, <laughs> but uh, <laughs> so uh, you know, in the finest tradition. Uh, so, okay, if the soul is destroyed because it's no longer needed, then that kind of implies that something still does remain, right? Something higher that that will move on. No, does it, does it imply something? No, the source says they will not allow it, allow the soul to move on if it needs to be destroyed. So can Jesus name an example where uh, or a situation where a soul would be no longer needed? Example. Or under what conditions would that occur? Soul is no longer needed. Yes, there's many examples. I feel like souls have been destroyed before. When the soul is not doing anything, it's just living in a loop. It's just reincarnating back to the same life over and over again. And it's completely trapped and cannot move forward at all. And so, and so the soul is destroyed. And so nothing of what then was that soul remains after? No. Wow. Oh, wow. That's a bummer. Uh, yeah. Well, but the soul lost its sense of purpose, right? Okay. Mm -hmm. And it was like it was stuck in this loop. I, 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 that's the only way I can describe it. It's in this loop where it's recycling back in over and over and over again is the exact same scenario. And the exact same thing happens each time. It's almost like a, now I'm going to show my age. You know, when you're, you have an old 45 LP and the needle and it's just zoom, zoom, yep. zoom. And he's that, that's what it's like. That's what they're showing me. It's well, like, that's what it, yeah, it's what our brain is like as well. Right. Especially as we age. So. Um. <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Um, but, you know, that's what I'm getting very clearly. If it just keeps coming back in, repeating the same scenario over and over and over and not showing any progressive growth at all deep within the soul, it, it's, a, it's a waste of energy. And Are because there? It's a waste of it, sorry, because it's a waste of energy, it then has to be destroyed and then they start over. Now, with that soul and you starting over, does that mean that that soul reincarnates into another soul? No, it's completely gone. Wow. Sorry for interrupting you just now. Um, so are there a lot of souls here on the planet right now that are likely to be uh, destroyed after living out their current life? And could he put a percentage on it? planet that that could be destroyed after living their kind of, no it's a very 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 small percentage very small okay but are there people now on the planet who whose soul will be destroyed after living out their current life are there a, a few hundred few thousand people now on the planet with whom that will happen uh, and a large number that would be destroyed after living out this life. No, no. And I'm getting, 
that most of the time this these souls that are destroyed they never reach human form oh okay so it's like um and i i see i see so uh -huh. i'm getting that most of them are plant form plant life uh amoeba uh you know small insects things like that and they're just stuck in the loop. They can't ever move forward. They've been given thousands of opportunities. But, but they're, I, they're unproductive. It's, on the other hand, it's quite challenging if you are a rock to have a lot of soul growth, no? no uh, <laughs> <wouldn't you say? laughs> well, I mean, uh, <laughs> it's kind of an impossible, uh, impossible challenge here, uh, yes. Jesus. But a rock does not have a soul. It only has a consciousness, not a soul. Mm -hmm. A tree has a soul. A tree has a soul, yeah. Wow. A blade of grass has a soul. An insect has a soul. An animal has a soul. Uh, even if you pluck a carrot from the ground and you wash it off and you're going to eat it, that has a soul. Well, I mean, but uh, how, how, does an amoeba have, have a soul? I... Yes. And, and but what would be, uh, I mean, I'm sorry uh, about if this question is stupid, but what is a typical soul growth uh, moment with an amoeba? Like death or uh, can an amoeba suddenly feel empathy toward a fellow amoeba or uh, it, it, it's really hard to uh, fathom how uh, how you could not be just doing the same thing all uh, over again as an amoeba because the only thing you do uh, is just, you know, look for food. But you're gaining a consciousness. You're gaining a level of consciousness that you did not have before. Mm -hmm. So that whole issue of trying to survive is, is adding to your consciousness, your soul consciousness. Okay. Interesting. Uh, let me ask another question. And I, I might have asked a similar question in another video, but it's kind of on topic. Are there powers that will prevent us, that will actually prevent us, uh, the power could be you, Jesus, um, or one of your uh, merry men, uh, that, um, that will indeed prevent us from, um, from, uh, uh, from the, uh, basically firing nuclear missiles at each other? That's will you prevent question. the nuclear war? Especially at this current time where... Especially you know, in this current time, yes. I don't understand the whole victory that's being portrayed on, you know, the Ukraine victory. Because the many times that we have probed Putin, he always has dirty tricks up his sleeve. So sure. he's not going to take this blow to his ego lying down, folks. <laughs> he just isn't. I mean, you got to He's so unpredictable yeah. in that way. Um, is there anything or a force out there that would prevent a nuclear war? Now, this is the answer from Jesus, and the answer is no. So if we are able to 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 to. Um we are able to to actually blow up the world if that would be our uh, collective desire, or at least the desire of uh, the power players. So we are able to blow up the world. No. No. Now listen to this answer. You can blow up yourselves, but you will never blow up the world. But we can definitely make it uninhabitable for uh, a very, very long time. There will always find a way. There will always be beings that find a way and, and make it habitable. Yeah, they say cockroaches because their, their shielding can actually withstand uh, gamma radiation. Did you know that? No. Uh, that's, that's always when they say that, that like when we blow ourselves up, cockroaches will take over the world. Right. And we would then reincarnate as cockroaches. And, and that would be very, 
a deserved uh, fate, I think. <laughs> yeah, well, it's um, the of the world, absolutely. But then the people that are making decisions are not making decisions on our behalf. I mean, that was the whole idea of a political structure to begin with, is that, you know, somebody is making decisions on behalf of the people, but that that is that is no longer, right? No, Who makes decisions on behalf of the people anymore? Nobody. They make decisions based upon themselves. Yeah, we call that here uh, where I am, uh, the revolt of the elite against the people. And uh, I'm, I'm, uh, you know, I think people that know me a little bit, uh, they know I'm not, uh, I, 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 don't, I don't have a soft spot for, um, let's say, far out theories about, uh, let's say, secret elites running the world. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, our leaders definitely uh, don't really, are not um, following our, uh, are not doing what the, the average voter wants. That, that is for certain, yeah. Um, uh, of course, in their own mind, they think they act in our best interest. Uh, uh, but, but anyway, let, that's, that's for another video and for other people to, uh, to explore. Um, uh, so thus, uh, from where Jesus is sitting, um, does he consider the prospect of uh, nuclear holocaust very likely? At this moment in time, if it gets into the wrong hands, anything is possible. But do you see like a nuclear Armageddon in the next month or so? No, no. Okay. And how about in the next year or so? Next year. You see any nuclear. Uh, bombs being dropped in the next year? No. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, so, uh, regarding this conversation, is there is there an, an, something that you want to say that I maybe the question to an answer uh, the the answer to a question that I didn't ask or something relevant that you would like to tell us? I would like to say something. Because okay. Jesus is saying no on the dropping of a bomb, a nuclear bomb. And I'm not trying to scare people, but sometimes we're not supposed to know what is going to happen because by knowing that means we can avoid it. Right. Mm -hmm. And sometimes psychics cannot make you avoid everything. Sometimes you have to experience it whether you like it or not. And you two can things. follow. S specifically two things, crypto crashes and nuclear uh, bombs. <laughs> same thing. <laughs> They're the same thing. Mm -hmm. um, but exactly right. You know, uh, you're not supposed to, to hide oh. from, from a lot of these circumstances. So I'm just putting that out there. So we got to know, but then maybe because Jesus is very respectful of source law, maybe that we're not allowed to know that there is going to be a nuclear weapon use. Now, how we bypass that is we go to the aliens. Oh, aliens. And, and we say to the alien, like Bashar, we'll say, is there going to be a nuclear bomb anytime soon? No, it will be avoided. So there you go, because they're outside of source law. So they can give more answers that are seemingly protective of our of us as humans. Uh, did you just say you have Bashar with you? Yes. So well, then I would also like to have the the, the perspective of Bashar uh, when it comes to uh, the ability of a nuclear bomb to either destroy or completely wipe out the soul. What what's his take on it? Is it the same answer as Jesus? Nuclear bombs being able to wipe itself. It can't be done. Only he, nobody has the power to wipe out the soul apart from source. Even aliens do not have that power to wipe out the soul. The soul is designed in such a mathematical way that nobody would ever be able to decode it. And in order to inject a frequency to destroy it, only God has that power. 
Good. And from where Bashar is sitting, uh, does does he consider it uh, possible that uh, alien powers for extra dimensional forces would stop a nuclear war? I mean, at the end of the day, we also share our planet with maybe, you know, I, uh, God knows, uh, underground races, um, other very intelligent races that we cannot perceive. Uh, you know, I can imagine that there would be a power uh, out there looking out for the, the interest of all, right? It, it's kind of sad that we could just blow up the planet for for ourselves is one thing, but also for... Uh, you know, all the other intelligent people that are just uh, or beings that are uh, living their own lives on the planet and are just and, and who are just caught uh, up in our crap show. Right. Um, do you have the power to stop a nuclear bomb? Yes, they do. They do have the power to stop it. Would you? If they thought that the mission was important, they definitely would. Um, how would you intervene? We would take out the person or the people that are responsible for hitting the button. Mm -hmm. um, so they would, even they wouldn't even, that, sorry, sorry, go ahead. Even if that means hijacking their consciousness and, 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 and infiltrating more peaceful ideology. Hmm. Interesting. That's a good answer. Uh, what? Uh, so, but, but what? What would be? Uh, are there scenarios likely where you you would allow it? Where you would allow nuclear war? I'm trying to grasp under which conditions you you would intervene. Ah, oh, would allow uh, a nuclear war? No. I don't feel like there are scenarios that they would really allow it. They they would want to save the planet as much as possible. We're like a TV show to them. That's what they're saying to me. They like watching us. They like seeing how we behave. They wish that they had the full range of emotions. You know, even though they're very intelligent beings, they're a lot more advanced than we are. But they don't experience that emotional attachment that we do as humans. Are they um, kind of uh, autistic? Sorry for using that word. Maybe in the, I hope people don't get me wrong, but like. Uh, they're devoid of emotions in some areas. Um, I see what you mean. Um, yes. They don't really experience emotions like we do. So how we love one another and how we hate one another and how we experience like anger and, and fear and, and all these emotions are guiding our lives. Aliens are not guided by emotions. They're guided by like some form of mathematical physics technology uh, that, that is completely devoid of emotion. That also sounds kind of uh, sad, right? But they do have a soul, right? No. Uh -huh. No, they do not have souls. What What is their role in uh, in, in relation to us? Are they are our minders, or they're that's, just doing their own funny. thing? That's funny you ask that because they monitor us. They keep track of us. They watch us. On behalf of whom? On behalf of whom? That's a good question. On behalf of whom? Whoever their creator is. And who might that be is the uh, next question. It's the dark. Uh-oh. So... Okay. Uh, you care to elaborate on that? We bring light into the world. We're supposed to be shining examples of light. And they don't have that ability. 
Mm -hmm. because they're not emotionally attached to anything. They're not emotionally involved in anything. So they're created and they're showing me like this entity and it looks dark to me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Whether it's the dark, which I don't believe it is, but it is a dark. Um, Whereas when you look at source, source is very, very bright and very, you know, like orangey, yellow, almost like staring at the sun. But as you get closer to it, the, the, the light is, is white. But as it's hitting like prisms, okay, it's changing color. But, I mean, it's so powerful, so strong. Um, when they're showing me what they came from and, and they're saying, well, that's strong too. Uh, but it looks like it's just a dark cloud, a dark entity. And is there intention to, to, uh, I mean, but an absence of light does not necessarily mean evil, correct? Does an absence of light necessarily mean evil? Yes, it does. It does mean it's evil. It does mean it's, does it mean you're evil? Yes. That's from of Bashar. Course, evil is a very human, uh, but of course. I, uh, right. It's, uh, but there are, you know, there are elements. Look, just as we're created from the light, but we have lots of dark elements within us, right? Mm-hmm. Just because they're created from the dark or this dark entity, this dark cloud or whatever this is, the absence of light, they have to have a balance too, energetically. So there can be some form of good within them. It's it's all based upon intention, right? And that goes for humans, that goes for aliens, that goes for animals, whatever. It's all about intention. And if they would stop a nuclear war here, their intention would basically not be necessarily good, but just because it's in their interest to keep this uh, freak show down here uh, going. (laughs) Freak show. Um, That is correct. To, to to, To keep the entertainment going, so to speak. Yes, they... They not they're not emotionally attached to us. Why would they want to keep this going the way it is? I mean, in, in like uh, on the surface, you could say, okay, if they stop a nuclear war, it would be a good thing, right? For for us, we would be kind of happy when when they did that. But what, if they would do that, but um, what would what would be their ulterior motive? Uh, their dark motive be in doing so. To keep watching us, to keep monitoring us, you know, okay. we we are emotionally attached to aliens. They have no emotional attachment to us, right? So it's almost like we're we're mice in a lab. Mm-hmm. It's very rare that scientists form. I mean, I'm not saying they don't, but on the whole, you know, emotional attachments to their their whatever it is they're monitoring. That's almost what it's like. We're like lab rats running around yeah. populating the earth and, and they're fascinated by us. But uh, yeah, go ahead. Sorry. Equally, we are fascinated by them, or at least a, a portion of us are, but we emotionally attach ourselves to them, whereas they don't to us. Are, do they look down upon us or are they kind of jealous or may, maybe both? Ooh. No. Uh, are you jealous? Yeah, in some ways they are jealous. We have a more fulfilling existence than they do. They mm. just exist. There's nothing more than existing to them. They just mm-hmm. exist. They, they don't have a purpose, really. I mean, obviously, they do have some purpose, but not like us, not, not like this 
this betterment of the soul because they don't have a soul. We're here to better our souls, to better ourselves, to experience, to suffer, to love, to grieve. All of those emotions, they just exist. But are they also this particular group uh, uh, are they also up to causing uh, a ruckus down here to you know increase our suffering just to test us a little bit or are they really just observing and that's it have we cause our own trouble here mostly but yeah anyway that's a good question um do you cause any trouble down here no i don't feel like they're allowed to cause trouble down here it's off limits um mm -hmm. We do that ourselves. We do a good job of that ourselves. Like that's that's part of the observing nature is how we destroy each other. Now they they do destroy. So if you're just entity beings without a soul, how do you destroy each other? Well, they destroy each other with technology that we don't even know about. Are they physical? Holographic. holographic. Mostly holographic. Would you be affected? So let's ask this question. If an alien, you know, say that a, a group of aliens was standing on the spot where a nuclear bomb would strike, would they be, oh, would they be wiped out? And that is a yes. Oh, and that's the reason they would like to stop it. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> <laughs> lots of food and out here, folks. <laughs> uh, I don't know where to go after that. So they would actually be vaporized energetically because they don't have a soul. But we having a soul, we would continue to live on. Now, we would have some damage to the soul. Do we have damage to the fabric of the soul? Yes, there would be some damage to the soul. Ah, that's but that's what them, I would try to they would be Completely vaporized. And could could the damage to our souls be be uh, repaired, or would it be, or how how would that damage affect us? It would be know. repaired in the next lifetime, but you would still take that soul memory and that damage with you. Yeah. Mm. So these uh, these aliens are uh, uh, have a very uh, voyeuristic uh, inclination, kind of a kind of a kinky bunch. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> You're so funny. Sorry, but I think I think that's the signal we we need to quit the video, folks. On the voyeur. Of the voyeurism, please. We've been there before. Uh, <laughs> those of you that have been following me for a long time, you will get that joke. Uh, yeah, they'll laugh at that. They will. Mm. Those that have been following me for a long time will find that hilarious. Sorry about that, but uh, yeah. But that's that's what it is. They will actually vaporize. Would you know? Let's see. Can aliens predict the future? Not necessarily. So they, you know, they could come down here and wander and roam around the earth in energetic form. And unless you are, you know, you can see holograms, you're a psychic medium, you can see holograms. Like I see holograms, right? I have dead people waving at me when I'm driving down the road where they died in car crashes and I have to manually switch that off, right? Or I would just... <laughs> Have I feel like I'm on a parade route all of the time? Um, you know, so yes, you could see that, but would they know that a nuclear bomb was about to go off? Not necessarily. So it can mm. terrorize them. Are they are they here among us, like living on the uh, uh projecting on the earthly plane, or are they uh out there in space or both? Yeah, they do. They do research here. They they project themselves on the earthly plane. Um, although I feel like that era is coming to a close. I feel like it's better to just watch from afar. Once they realize that we couldn't really see them, 
Um, in holographic form. Now, I'm not saying that all aliens are holographic, folks. Please do not send me emails. Pages and pages and pages. Of, I Please don't. I'm not going to read it. I was, um, I was just about to start that email, but, but okay. <laughs> don't. Don't. Because I just, <laughs> no. Don't do that. But, um, yeah, the holographic ones, when they found out that we could, you know, they could come around and be unnoticed, they did a lot of research. I feel like in the 60s and in the 70s, 50s, um, not so much in the 40s, but certainly the 50s, 60s, and 70s, they were roaming around here. And then they got kind of bored with that. Mm. They don't need yeah. to do that. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Okay. Well, I think we've been running for about 40 minutes. Fascinating video. Uh, and any um, final thoughts or feelings from uh, anyone? Uh, or uh, Jesus or Bashar or one of the aliens? Jesus wants you all to know that he loves us one and all, which is a very nice message. Source says you must obey. And oh. Bashar says to me, watch my back. And I'm saying, why are you telling me to watch my back? And I don't know, but oftentimes aliens are, are constantly uh, trying to really rope me into their sphere. Yeah. And, mm -hmm. and you know what I mean? Like trying to get me to channel them and, and, and let them take over and, and talk through me all the time. I just don't allow that. So I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Um, they often say like messages when I'm channeling, they'll say, I love you. I love you, Liz. You're so this, you're so that like flattery, flattery, flattery. I'm like, mate, you know, if I was in my twenties and in a bar, maybe I could fall for these, you know, awful pickup lines. I just don't anymore. I'm too hardcore now. And uh, yeah, so I you mm -hmm. have to be careful of aliens. That's what they want. They want to communicate. They want that contact all the time. Uh, so, you know, I basically have firm boundaries in place. Uh, but yeah, I think this was an in interesting video. The fact that the nuclear weapon would harm them and not us on a soul level is very, very interesting to me. Very interesting. Definitely something yes. to explore. Oh, what was the name of the book that you were referring to? Oh, I need to, you know what? I, I must have it somewhere in a box, but I've moved 25 times in my life as an expat and, uh, or it was a library book, but for the life of me, I have no idea, but I will, uh, you asked me before when we spoke offline and, uh, I will dig that up, uh, at one point, um, I, I'm pretty sure it was one of the books that George Knapp did in the uh, in in the 90s, um, and I'm sure the theme was UFO knowledge from Russia. Uh, I think the book was from somewhere written in the time frame 1991, 1995, somewhere there. And um, uh, I will, I will, I will, I will try to um, find that book. It was a fascinating book. Uh, because uh, it was uh, written, um, we know now that that um, just like maybe China, that the country just opened up for a limited point of time, limited uh, period of time when uh, some some very interesting knowledge could could see the the light of day. And now these countries are closing up again, and, um, uh, and there's so much knowledge hidden there. Also occult uh, knowledge in Russia. And I, I speak from firsthand uh, experience there. Um, yeah. So uh, anyway, I'll, I'll try to, to find uh, that, uh, the, the title of that, uh, of that book. Uh, it's not on top of my to-do list. It's a lot of other things to do, but uh, it's, it's, uh, it's, it's on, it's on uh, in my mind somewhere there. So, uh, okay, folks. Pardon? Thank you very much. Thank you. No, thank you. And uh, I think I had a lot of speaking time, which is not good as the host. But uh, again, I had to set up the the, the topic uh, pro uh, properly, and I hope you enjoyed it. Uh, and uh, thanks, Liz, for joining. And uh, we'll try to reconvene next uh, next week to do that uh, ocean vid. Great. Thank you very much. We'll stop this one here. Okay. Goodbye.